you were looking at this face and listening to this voice, you were tuned in to the best kept secret in sports talk. I'm your friendly neighborhood, Smokey, and you are officially on the hot seat. And what we do on the hot seat? Say it with me. We set somebody's ass on fire. So, of course, we bring in Florida State back to the hot seat, man. So, a few things I want to discuss with you all and talk about the game against Florida a few weeks ago. So, without any further ado, man, paying homage to the ghosts over my left and my right. I know y'all been missing the gospel for the past few weeks, but goddamn it, the gospel is back. Ding, ding, classes in session. So, um, this show is probably going to be longer than most shows. Uh, the reason for that is there's a lot I want to get off my chest. There's a particular topic I want to discuss with you all, and I've been trying to figure out exactly when to uh, discuss this, but you know what time better than now? One, to wait until after the bowl game, but fuck it. <laughs> you know, let's go ahead and discuss it now. But before we, um, before we get off into that particular uh, discussion, do want to talk about how the season ended. Um, talk about the Florida game just a tad bit. Um, that Florida game was exciting. Um, it was good to see an exciting game. Florida State coming out on top on national television during the holiday season. Um, I remember talking to my boy, old Cobbs. What up, Cobbs? Good friend of the show, man. I remember talking to Cobbs, and I was telling him, I want to see Florida State beat their ass. <laughs> I want to see Florida State blow out Florida because I just thought Florida State was just that uh, more talented and a uh, better coach. Um he was like, man, you tripping. If they win, they win. You know, it's cool. It's a uh, rivalry game, which he is right. Uh, rivalry games, do uh, they are weird, as I've said before uh, early in the season, but I want them to kick Florida's ass. And there were some other things I was looking at that I wanted to see that I actually didn't get a chance to see. But um, all in all, it was a great victory. And the number one thing I took away from that game was, if you all are a fan of the show, you've uh, been following us all season. There is something I wanted to see from Jordan Travis, and God damn it, I saw just that. I have been waiting for this type of game from him. What I want to know about Jordan Travis is, can he win a game for Florida State? When I, what, this is what I mean. The defense is probably shaking. It hasn't had their best showing. They've keyed in on the running game. You're not able to run the, run, run the football like you'd like to. Can you can can Jordan Travis put this team on his shoulders and carry them to a victory? That's what I want to see because at some point during the season he's going to have to do that. It's going to be a game in which the the offense has the defense's number. Meaning when I, I mean like for example, Clemson just may have Adam Fuller's number. There may be a game in which NC State keys in and they're going to put eight nine in the box and they're going to dare you to throw, right? They're gonna, there's going to be an opportunity for him to win a game. I don't mean just one drive. I mean consistently go down and put Florida State in scoring opportunities. I want to see, has he progressed into that quarterback? Whereas, like I said before, he puts a lot on his shoulders. You know what? We're not clicking here. We're not clicking there. We're not getting enough stops. You know what? Just put it on my shoulders and ride me to the goddamn finish line. And that's what Florida State did. And you wanted to see that type of growth, that type of maturation in your quarterback. And we saw it. So, listen, uh, I, I was told not to be a fan later. You kiss my ass. Y'all scoot over and make room on the goddamn uh, bandwagon. I am a fan later. Much later. But I'm a fan. Because that was one of the, probably the last thing I was looking for, looking from, uh, Jordan Travis was to see him just take over a football game when nothing's going right for Florida State it seems as if we have nothing else to hang our hat on the quarterback come and what the, comes and does what the quarterback is supposed to do ride him to the finish line it was super super impressive to see, impressive to see him do that and you know he's done so much to set himself up and his football team up for the next season um you, I should probably do an entirely separate show for things I was wrong about this season. Um, you look at what I thought of Jordan Travis prior to the season, I was wrong there. Uh, and I don't even know if it's more so wrong. I think I was proven wrong, meaning that probably what I said about certain things were probably true at that moment, but they didn't manifest the way I thought they would, right? Uh, the season, un I didn't expect nine wins. We about to, it seemed like Florida State is about to get ten wins, and I pre only predicted six. Um, last off season, I talked a lot of shit about promoting Tony Tokars, and God damn it, I have no quarrel with Tony Tokars whatsoever. 
you look at what he was able to do with the progression, along with a few other guys, and uh, Jordan Self and Jordan Travis included, with the pro, uh, uh, the production and the play of Jordan Travis, how he's grown as a quarterback. <sighs> Tate Rodemaker, and only though we only we've only seen glimpses of him, and the the biggest glimpse come the biggest glimpse coming in the Louisville game. Night and day, guys. Night and day. So you have to tip your hat off to that guy. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he works with A.J. Duffy moving forward, see if he can get the game to slow down for that kid because it, it seems as if right now the guy can recruit, the guy understands the game, he understands what, he, what he's doing. And it, just coaching in general, um, there were a lot of question marks about a lot of coaches, head coach included. Um, I, made a, um, I made a mistake. I misspoke on the last show about the margin of victory for Florida State. And it was 24 points. When was the last time we were able to say that for the victory that Florida State has had? I think that is in direct correlation to the job Adam Fuller did, and I think that is a direct correlation with the job Alex Atkins and um, Mike Novell did. Um, the play calling was much, much, much better. I was critical at times, and I think I had the right to be because they was uh, spotty or at least questionable in critical moments throughout the season. But the, the, the play calling, and I guess this is what happened when you have – and upgrade in talent. So the play calling was better. Um, I remember watching the Florida game, and I'm shades of Jacksonville State coming back. Oh, Lord, I'm thinking about the end of the goddamn LSU game. And just when you think all hope is lost, Alan Fuller dials up the most timely blitz with one of the most uh, key or cornerstones of the defense, one of the leaders of the defense coming in and saving the day, so to speak. So you've seen growth. Um, I was critical of, just like a lot of other people, I was critical of goal line situations and how Mike Norville squandered some opportunities. And through the latter part of the season, especially the last quarter of the season, you saw Florida State not only get better at these things, but it, it got to the point to where you were expected to score versus you were being kind of, it, it, those were cringe-worthy moments during those times when we get goal line situations, right? So to see the growth, the maturation, to see the, the, the evaluations uh, coming to fruition from the coaching staff of the players, to see how they gelled together, to see how they didn't let that 0-3 run derail the season. This is impressive, people. And dare I say, it is a great time to be a Florida State Seminole. It's great. Good. It's a good time to be a Florida State Seminole. And I've talked to you all before. You remember we had the conversation about what does 4 no get you? Right. Um, what does nine and three get you? What does ten and three get you? Uh, hopefully, it sets you up for the future. Hopefully, next season you won't have too many uh, eleven a.m. games. Right, you'll have some, but not as many. Hopefully, you can get some of the best ACC referees that they have to offer versus the litany of bullshit <laughs> that the ACC give the ACC conference, the ACC conference that the Atlantic Coast Conference gives Florida State. Because they go to marquee games, they go uh, officiate the better teams. Um, you're looking at being able to set yourself up in the recruiting world. We'll have a recruiting conversation, uh, probably coupled with the transfer conversation. Setting up for this, saw um, the news about Jaheen Bell, and whoo! I'm guys. I've been following these transfers closely, guys that Florida State are involved with it, how they fit in. I don't think that was a person I wanted more and a person I'm probably excited about, as excited about getting as Jaheen Bell. I, I'm ready to see some tight end screens. I'm ready to see some shovel passes. I'm ready to see some end arounds with uh, Jaheen Bell, guys. You talk about a goddamn weapon. That boy is a weapon. And you, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, y'all. <laughs> I'm really trying not to get ahead of myself. And just for the moment, table or at the very least curb my expectations for next season. But, man, you cannot help but be excited. And some of y'all were uh, messing with me about Adam Fuller. Y'all wanted me to say some shit about Adam Fuller, something positive about Adam Fuller so badly. And you know what? You got me. For a good stretch of the season, he did his damn job. I had no quarrel with him. But just like I was telling y'all, I was talking to old cops, and I was telling him, I want to see Adam Fuller against Florida. I want to see Adam – because for the most part, mobile quarterbacks have torched Florida State this season. And I wanted to see how he learned from any of his mistakes. So, had he – not necessarily mistakes, but had is he able to put a, a better game plan in place for mobile quarterbacks with the uh, personnel he had on the field. And 
the Florida game, in some instances defensively, it reminded me of the Wake Forest game. And it seems as if there were times in which we gave up big plays and shouldn't have, probably in a position to make a stop, and we didn't. Um, there were times in which we just couldn't get off the field. Critical third downs were converted for the uh, Florida offense. And I'm like, man, this feels like Florida. We, we have to get stops. And there were junctions in that game in which Mike Adam, sorry, Adam uh, Fuller in that defense, they got stops. And when you look at the totality of things and you want to look at um, like the, that game specifically was to me a microcosm of the season because you really want to see what Adam Fuller can do in these situations. You want to see how he's progressed situationally as a defensive coordinator, and he has. He's gotten better every season at Florida State, and I don't know what more you can ask for as it relates to – you always hear me say the one of the key words here on this show is traction. I want to see traction. I want to see improvement, and he's done that every season. My question about Adam Fuller is, and I'm going to ask you all this. Get in the comments and let me know what y'all think. Give me your answers. The question about Adam Fuller is this. When the chips are on the line, who do you want to be your defensive coordinator? Do you believe Adam Fuller can take that next step? Because right now you're talking about improving and making progress. Mike Novell has lapped him. Mike Novell is a much better coach than we thought this time last year. Adam Fuller is better, but he's not on the same level as Mike Novell. There's a bit of distance between those two. Now, to, in his defense, he has he doesn't have the level of talent to play with that Mike Novell does. So it will be interesting to see what Adam Fuller can do with a a, a lot of talent at his disposal. But that aside. Do you trust Adam Fuller to create to do you trust Adam Fuller to create an elite defense? Because he's good. Decent. Decent good, whatever. But there <laughs> guys, I'm trying to be as nice as I can. Because it's not like he did a bad job. And then y'all have to factor in that I just don't like his ass. But I, I do, seriously, I do pride myself on being as unbiased as possible and giving you all the truth from my set of lenses. He's not a bad defensive coordinator. He, if, even if he's good, I don't give a shit. This is Florida State University. I can't do shit with good. I am used to great. I'm used to great defenses. I'm used to uh, great defensive coordinators. I'm used to great defensive minds. And I don't think I should have to curb my expectations in that regard for what we want, or at least for the product that we want out on the field defensively. So do you think that Adam Fuller can ascend to what we expect and what we are used to from the defensive coordinator coaching position? I don't know. I don't know. Um, And the only reason why I want to say no but how can you say no about a guy who's improved every season? How can you say no about a guy who doesn't have that? He has some talent, right, but not as much as you would like him to have. So it will be interesting for me to see what he can do if he has more talent at his disposal, right? Um, I saw this season he had to mask a lot of things. Um, the Florida State got hit with the injury bug a lot on offense. Um, like, you know, we all talked about Fabian Lubbin. And I don't think Florida State, like I said this before, had Fabian Lovett been there, Florida State may have won another game, maybe even two. But I don't think the lack of Fabian Lovett is the reason why Florida State lost those three games in that stretch because I still think Florida State had enough to win. So I don't think those two are mutually exclusive. He probably would have helped win, but he's not the reason why they lost, if you follow me. Um, you're looking at the, the linebacker position, probably the best group on that field. Well, at least on the on the defensive side of the ball, you look at the back end. The safety tandem did not start coming around to the latter part of the season. So you wonder what Adam Fuller can do with a collection of talent and some and, and a talent that understand. Because one of the things I remember telling you all, I was excited about this defense being there three sec- three consecutive years in the same scheme, same system. So, um, I don't know. Um, I don't claim to have all the answers here. Um, I'll tell you this. I do not believe him to be an elite defensive coordinator. Um, And this is probably a great segue into 
what I really want to talk to you all about. And it's this. This is probably the most important offseason Florida State has had, not just in recent memory, but in memory, period. Um, in preparation for this particular show, guys, I, I have a great memory. I think I have a really good memory. And I went back every year. I tried to chronicle every year, every offseason, and tried to remember an offseason as important as this one. And I couldn't think of one. Well, let me let me rephrase this. I tried to find an offseason that was more important than, than this one. Not as important, but more important. And I could not find one. And the reason why I think this one is so important is because a lot of what you're going to see in these next few weeks, these next few months, I think is going to shape up what happens in the foreseeable future for Florida State, not just the 2023 season, but the 2023 season and beyond. So when I'm talking about Adam Fuller in this offseason, he's going to have to upgrade himself because he's not going to lose his job, right? He's coached well enough to keep it. But if Florida State, because people be honest, with everything you see coming back, with the additions that Florida State is at key positions, the, the additions that Florida State is going to get in their transfer portal, with the college football playoff being expanded to 12 teams, there are going to be playoff aspirations. You're talking about Heisman talks for your quarterback. And I'm going to tell you something. Having Mike Norvell hasn't seen this type of pressure in his entire life. Maybe parenting, <laughs> probably or maybe being a husband. That's the only thing I can compare to this shit because the the the, the amount of expectations and the amount of pressure he's going to have, 2023 season. I don't think he's ever been prepared for it. Doesn't mean he's not ready for it. Doesn't mean he can't do it. I just don't think he he he's, he's prepared. Like, how can you prepare yourself for this type of shit? Coming from where he's come, looking at his coaching background, it's a lot. And I'm telling you something. Being able to gut a football team, strip it down, and build it up to what you wanted to do is great because the expectations are lowered. He, people were probably calling for his head once upon a time, but he knew he had X amount of years to write this ship. And I remember telling y'all, he coached as a he, he coached the team and he managed the team as a coach who knew he had a certain number of years to get this right. You look at everything he has at his disposal, he has absolute and complete full buy-in from the boosters and the admin he has probably every resource at his fingertips managing this team upward is fine managing that team on a trajectory that is going to put you in the upper echelon of football is different florida state pressure is different my biggest fear is florida state and Mike Novell turned into Tom Herman in Texas. People, we cannot have that happen. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, follow me. So if you remember Tom Herman, he was white hot as it relates to a coaching uh, candidate coming out of Houston. Uh, I think he was an OC at uh, Ohio State, right? Really good offensive mind, highly, very well respected, put a lot of guys in the league, and he was a good recruiter. Um while I'm thinking about it, that's probably one of my biggest issues with Adam Fuller. I, I'm digressing, but stay with me. Um, you look at all the guys Florida State is is in for defensive players, whether it be recruit or transfer. How many of you – I'm not saying they don't mention Adam Fuller, but how many actually mention Adam Fuller, right? You, you'll hear a lot about the position coach, but you seldom hear them discuss Adam Fuller. So outside of not being an elite coach, in my opinion, I don't think he's a very good recruiter. And that doesn't mean he doesn't um, he doesn't understand the, the, the kids he's recruited. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that it's telling that they don't mention him when they're having these conversations. When you're reading the, um, the publications about what recruits were saying when they come on officials, uh, unofficial visits, and so on and so forth, you rarely ever hear Adam Fuller. It bothers me. Moving forward. Um, so if, if you remember Tom Herman going to Texas, it's Texas. Texas has Florida State type of expectations, maybe even bigger. Um, and here's a guy who had every resource at his disposal. So if you remember, I think his first year they went seven and six. So 2017, it was cool, right? No biggie. 2018, whew, man. 
like think about this. They went to the AC. I'm sorry. They went to the Big Twelve Championship game, right? They finished the season ten and four. If you remember, they played Georgia in the Sugar Bowl and they beat Georgia. And in my opinion, the score was not indicative of how the game went. I remember watching that game. In my opinion, Texas whooped their ass. Um, you look at the fact that they had a top three recruiting class that year and a top three recruiting class the next season. Listen, man, the expectations at Texas were at an all-time high. That 2018 team was pretty good. I remember Sam Elliger being there. I remember uh, Humphrey being there. They had a good team. They had a good roster. And somehow or another, the fucking wheels fell off. It, okay, that's not fair. They didn't fall off. But those high level expectations that that booster club and those that administration and those fans had he didn't meet it the next season. i think they went like eight and five or some shit right so they were like okay ho hum all right you know well he took a step back no problem we'll keep him here we'll retain him next season they fired his ass because i think they went what seven and four or some shit I, I don't remember but you know they let him go and this is the guy who won all four bowl games right i remember that 2018 season Hell, they won the Red River River rivalry, and that's important. That is very important in Texas, right? Uh, but that, that recruited, those recruited classes were good. I remember, I think it was the 18 class, they had a hell of a safety tandem coming in. Two five stars, I believe. Those recruiting classes were real good. Like I said, both were third in the country. And that was a hump that he couldn't get over. Now, depending on who you ask, the stories will vary as it relates to what they think happened from 2018 to 2019, why he was ultimately fired at the end of 2020. But at the end of the day, he didn't get the goddamn job done. Building the team up was fine, right? Um, we're going to give you full control of the goddamn team. You do what you need to do. That goes back to the point I made earlier. Managing the team with no expectation is different from managing the team and coaching the team with expectations. And you're talking about a team, uh, oh, I'm sorry, a, a fan base and an admin and booster that are just about as rabid and un- um, I don't want to call Florida State uh, crazy, but, you know, the fan base is crazy. Texas has something similar, right? That they, they, they are very – what do we all say about Florida State fan base? They're unreasonable. <laughs> they can be unreasonable at times. Texas is no different. They are just as bad, if not worse. And it's not – I'm not saying the expectations got to them, but the product on the field did not mimic what they want. It didn't mimic what they saw the prior season because if you beat – in SEC power, and I think Georgia was maybe fifth or eighth in the country at that time. I don't remember. But um, they beat a powerhouse in college football, the SEC, no less. And you you all know how people feel about beating the SEC. I don't think the expectations could have been higher because in college football, you don't take steps backwards after you've taken one or two steps forward. Well, fast forward to now, you look at Mike Novell. Nine and three, possibly ten and three, a five win swing. Well, I guess that you would call that a ten win swing from last season. You could have went the opposite way, right? You didn't. You won five more games. Um, you look at how the offense was humming. You look at the buzz around the program because, like I said, we've talked about what winning games can do for you. Now you're in prime position to get recruits. And one thing I appreciate about what Mike Novell is doing right now, he understands. Florida State isn't quite there yet to recruit with the Alabamas, the Georgias, uh, the Clemsons, the big boys. He's a tier right under that, and he understands that, right? He's recruiting a lot of kids from Florida, a lot of South Florida kids. He's trying to put a fence around the state of Florida because right now he's a state champ, and he should use that at his disposal, right? Because And that tells me he's still in building mode, which I have no problem with because for the most part you are. You're building towards the common goal which is bringing Florida State back to prominence. You look at all the things he has going for him. This could easily be a Texas situation. I'm not saying that if he doesn't meet expectations next year, he'll be fired. I don't believe that. I'm just saying the offseason is so important because of which way Florida State can go. Next season, because this season puts you in good uh, talks for the next two recruiting classes, right? That 2025 recruiting class is said to be special. That 2024 recruiting class is really fucking good. This puts you in prime position to put a stranglehold 
on the state of Florida. If you heard me talk about how the state of Florida is up for grabs, because for the most part, all three goddamn schools suck, and two of the schools not named Florida State have brand new head coaches. Well, now you have to you have an opportunity to show you are a class. You you are the class of the state. You're head and shoulders above whoever your counterparts and your peers are. Next season, yeah, it's time to be Clemson. It's time to get to ACC championships games. It's time to show that um, 2022 wasn't an admiration. This is the real deal. I am the guy for the job because I promise you, the guy who you pick to build isn't always the guy you pick to sustain. Those two are not always the same person. Well, here's an opportunity for Mike Novell to show I am that guy. I am the same person. This offseason is immensely report is, is immensely important because you don't want to win seven games next year. Think about that. Think about how pissed off a lot of you would be if Florida State won seven games. I don't give a good goddamn what the reason was, whether it be health, whether it be a uh, natural disaster. I don't know and I don't give a shit. Just sit here and think for a second how pissed off of you would be for whatever the reason if Florida State won seven games next year. A lot of you would be calling for that man's head. Now, I'm not saying you'd be right or not because who knows why that would be, but I don't. nobody wants to go into next season and not win at least nine games. Hell, I think probably the uh, expectation next season is 10 games looking at the goddamn schedule. The schedule should be easier next year than it was uh, this season. So I, I just want to let, put you all in the mind frame to understand, pay close attention to all the moves that are being made for Florida State right now. Because I'm telling you, every intricate piece, every chess move is to make sure that not only, we're not trying to sustain anything. This is the climb, remember? We're not trying to sustain nine and 10 wins. We are trying to sustain 10 wins and up, New Year's Six Bowls, playoff contention. We're trying to sustain that shit. Well, we're trying to get to that level and then be sustainable from there. We're not just trying to, we're going to be an 8-10 to 10 win season. We're Florida State, baby. We don't do that here. We do not do that shit at the state. Tallahassee is not the place for that. The expectations here are different. And I told y'all, I am not curving my expectations. The, 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 the curb. Let's, start, <laughs> let's get another acronym going, the curb. I'm not curving my expectations for anybody. It is what it is here. And I think the best part about this shit is I think Mike Novell understands that. But I don't know how long I've spent, but uh, I enjoyed this conversation. I really wanted to get off, get that off my chest because, again, it's something I was thinking about since Florida State was forward, you know, um, the expectations and how important this offseason is. And right now, I tell you this, if there was a monitor on this shit or a grade, you'd have to grade them well because right now Florida State is off to a smoking start this offseason because right now you have recruits. There are some recruits that you probably think Florida State won't get and I'm here to tell you they will. I can't release any names, of course, because, damn y'all, I just can't. <laughs> but I'm just kidding, fellas um, and gals. What he's doing right now, I'm a fan of. What he's doing right now, he's pumping the program in the right direction. And all the energy that they say he has, you can see it. You know, the, the energy, the, the, the team is starting to take on the persona of the head coach. And it's a guy who works hard. It's a guy who has a vision. If he keeps this up, I think the conversations won't be disappointment. I think the conversations will be um, like the former coach said or a former coach said, when this team comes into town, when this team rolls into town, hell comes with it. He's building that type of program. So, the offseason is nowhere near done, right? You still have uh, more transfers to get. You still have the early signing period to finish off with. Um, you still have to manage attrition as it relates to kids wanting to leave the program. And I think he's doing a decent job, well, a good job of that at present moment. So uh, we're going to be patient. Well, I'm not being patient. I misspoke. I'm sorry. I'm not being patient about shit anymore. Um, we're going to just keep a, a watchful eye on Mike Novell and see how he finishes up this offseason. Well, that's all the time I'm giving you. That's all the time I got. As always, man, if you clicked on this video, I really, really appreciate your time. Appreciate you watching. Please like. Please hit that like button for me. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Share these videos with people who you think enjoy this type of content. As always, you can reach me on the hot seat 19 
on Twitter. You can reach me at the hot seat 19 on Instagram. Until the next time, i uh, probably see y'all after the uh, bowl game, but it'll definitely be around National Signing Day. So, uh, like I said, until then, y'all be good.